Okay. Oh, awesome. Awesome. We're going to go, we're going to go into it and I'm, I'm going to share this thing with y'all that I saw, but we're going to, we're going to, I, I'm, I'm not going, I'm not going to worry about it. We're just going to go and God's going to lead me. Um, and then if we have time at the end, I want to show you in terms of the words we were talking about the words, something totally unrelated. I want to just put the nail in the coffin with reminding us how important words are. Okay. Just the nail in the coffin. Cause Tara made a little slip up and said, I don't have a good immune system. Nope. Honestly, um, somebody checked me because, you know, when I had COVID two weeks ago it was right after InvestFest and I wasn't sure. And I was like, I always get sick every time I travel. And somebody checked me like, first of all, we're not going to say that. And um, yeah, that's how we're going to do that. Okay. So let's bow our heads in prayer before we hop into this word. And we are really, really, really going to dive deep in it. And I want us to be so familiar with this text as women and men. This text is so powerful and it's something that we need to have as a part of common knowledge. Like they need to teach it in elementary school. Okay. All right. So let us bow our heads in prayer and we're going to hop right into this. Dear God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for your love. Thank you for this life. God, thank you for this opportunity for us to gather to bask in your word, because we know that every moment that you create is a blessing, but it is just insurmountable, innumerable blessing when we have a moment, when we have a present moment that we can spend in your rich, glorious, perfect word. And so it is just, it's just such a privilege for us. Thank you for this opportunity. God, I specifically ask that you use none of me and all of you and just allow me to be a vessel to deliver your message to your flock, the specific message that you want your flock to know, to hear, so that they may carry out your purpose. God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for allowing me to be a vessel in this space today. These and all the blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So I wanted to, like I said, I, um, I don't know why I, I subconsciously intentionally never danced on this, on this topic. And it's weird. I was the other night I was sleeping and I was dreaming about, sorry, Proverbs 31 woman. And this passage is so powerful. We're going to read the whole chapter, but the passage is so powerful because thousands of years later, 3000 years later, this woman, like everything that is described about this woman is still valuable today. Right. And, um, we can kind of like, um, translate some of the things that you know some of the stuff is out of context we're gonna have to translate it a little bit to relate it to today but this woman is amazing and um we're gonna talk about it all right so we're gonna go to proverbs 31 start with verse one the sayings of king lemuel and inspired utterance his mother taught him remember this is king lemuel his mother taught him these things. And so he's just regurgitating it for the scripture. Okay. King Lemuel. Listen, my son, listen, son of my womb. Listen, my son, the answer to my prayers. Do not spend your strength on women, your vigor on those who ruin kings. It is not for kings, Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, not for rulers to crave beer, lest they drink and forget what has been decreed and deprive all the oppressed of their rights. Let beer be for those who are perishing, wine for those who are in anguish. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. 
for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and needy. Now, y'all know I, I like to like try to these headings. I don't particularly like them because sometimes they divide the word in such a way that it, it's not it's not the proper place to start dividing the word. But the word does divide it here in this chapter is those first nine lines is just seems like it's like a general advice. And then 10 all the way through the end is specifically speaking about how to choose a wife, what type of wife to choose. Okay. A wife of noble character who can find she is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing in value. She brings him good, not harm all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buy it. Out of her earning, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but all, but you surpass them all. Charm is accepted, deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Okay, we're going to go through this line by line. All right, I hope y'all got at least got a good feeling, if, especially if that's your first time reading it. I hope you got this like a good feeling from reading it like, oh, wow, this woman is bomb. All right, let's go through this line by line. Um, okay. We talked about how this, put it in context. This is the sayings of Kim, King Lemuel and inspire utterance from uh, inspire utterance. His mother taught him. Okay. So this is first right there. This is important for us as for the women, us as mothers to know a good job of our, we already know this, especially everybody on here that I know well, a, a, a big job of ours is to raise our sons, but also teach our sons how to find a mate, because there are things that we know about women that they will never fully understand. And so as a mother, I read this, I'm like, yeah, tell them, right? And so I just don't want you to forget that as you are raising your sons, especially, I know everyone here will say this, but everyone doesn't raise kings. But especially for those of us who are raising kings, because this I this advice is very specific to someone who is raising a king, not just a regular man. Okay. So listen, my son. Listen, son of my womb. Listen, son, my son, the answer to my prayers. That part makes me cry because my son is the answer to my prayers. Right. Also, like keep in mind. Remember, right, especially when we pray for our children and we, we pray these beings into this earth, that our job is not only to bring them here, they are our legacy. So he's the answer to the prayers. And like, you really won't seal the prayer until I've realized that you're off on a good track. <laughs> okay. All right. First things first, do not spend your strength on women, your vigor on those who ruin kings. So I could go in about this. We're going to come back to this in a minute, but your, 
remember, especially for men, your strength, your vigor can be depleted many ways. And so I know the men that are on here, I know you personally, I know I don't have to tell y'all this, <laughs> but here it is in the scripture to say like, hey, your strength, your vigor, don't put it out on women. It, it's not, I know we like to think in this culture likes to tell us that, hey, you can go after your business. You can, especially if you're single, you can date a bunch of women. You can't. When you date a bunch of women, you take your strength and your vigor from your business, from your purpose. So it's no way you can date a bunch of women or even a woman that's not the woman and think that you're going to perform in your business at the workplace, whatever, perform optimally. It's not going to happen. So as women, it is up to us to tell our sons. And I know sometimes we want to just fall back and mind our business and be like, oh, he's single. He can do whatever he wants. Guess what? Every one of those women that he's dating is taken away from his purpose. Okay, next line. It is not for kings, Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, not for rulers to crave beer. Lest they drink and forget what has been decreed and deprive all the oppressed of their rights. Let beer be for those who are perishing, wine for those who are in anguish. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. This right here is like, <laughs> I don't know why this, these four through seven is not quoted a lot, just in general and in, in, in life and in all that and trying to get people not to do substance abuse or drink a lot. She's not saying don't drink. It's horrible. She's saying don't drink is not good for kings. It's okay for the regular people, but it's not good for kings because when you're a king, you have the responsibility of yourself and also the responsibility of those who you rule over. But when it's just you, if you are not a king, when it's just you, you don't have the other people relying on you. You know, maybe your family, but you don't have that luxury. Okay, somebody over on Instagram said, I'm a king. Okay, don't drink. Don't drink wine, but you can buy your, your subjects. <laughs> hey, I'm, let me get him a beer. Don't, you don't let it touch your lips because you have a different type of responsibility. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. Again, this is specifically for a king. It's not, you are not, you and your household is not the end of your responsibility. It goes far reaching after that. All right, let's get into this woman. Then she said, okay, those are the main things. The most important thing through this whole entire chapter. So it's 31. A third of it, is on just life. Two thirds of it, 66% of it is talking about how to choose a good woman. And so this is for men, but it is also for women. We can model ourselves after this woman. We know how to be the wife of a king. Everything else outside of this. So let me just be very, very clear, right? This is a woman, this Proverbs 40, 31 woman is a woman who wants to attract a king as her, as her husband. Everything else in the world that's telling you how to be whatever, sexy, a, bad, a baddie, all of that, that's if you want to attract a regular man. There's nothing wrong with that at all, but you have to make a decision. 
So here's the other thing. If you want to attract a king, kings are way more few and far between than a regular man. So just know that you, when you become this woman, you're not going to attract a whole bunch of men. Janelle actually asked me a little while ago, we was having a conversation, Janelle on here, shout out to her. We were having a conversation and she was like, said something like, um, I don't know, we were just busting it up. And she's like, yeah, I bet the men be in your DMs. Nope. I don't get no DMs y'all. And I'm happy. I really am. Because the woman that I am is not going to attract the regular man. And that's, that's by design. That's perfectly fine for me. Okay. All right. So let's go into this, this special woman that only gets the attention of a certain type of man. All right. A wife of noble character who can find also, before we go into this, um, I just want to remind you because, um, we've talked about this, but on, in the, the scripture, um, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. This is just to remind you that if you want to be married, you have to already be a wife, right? A wife of noble character who can find. That means she was already a wife before she got married. Okay. All right. Remember that she is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. So what does this mean? Her husband, if he's got this bomb wife, he doesn't lack anything of value because his whole value is his, his, the value is wrapped up in the woman. Like the treasure is the woman. She's the one, right? So I want just to remind you in this day and age right now where the roles are being reversed and women are courting men, right? I had this conversation with my family over JD's birthday. I'm not going to say who the particular people were with the conversation. I was just listening in on a conversation. And one guy was saying like, yeah, I was in such and such place. And um, the women were all hitting on me. And I'm like, what? And then the other gentleman was like, yeah, this is what happens. You know, buying me drinks. And the other, the other gentleman was like, yeah. And I'm like, no. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. The woman is the prize. That was the point that I was trying to get at. The woman is the prize. She brings him good, not harm all the days of her life. This right here, a wife of noble character is not a liability. She brings him good, not harm all the days of her life. Like this right here needs to be like, uh, men, y'all could be using this in memes and all the crazy male women wars that's going on out there on the social media. <laughs> she brings him good, not harm all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. So she is, she's a hard worker. This is really important to note already start going into the fact that she's a hard worker. Okay. She brings him, she brings him good, not harm, but she's also a hard worker. Okay. She's like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. So she is feeding her household, going where she got to go to feed her household. She gets up while it's still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. So she's taking care of her family and she's taking care of other families. Okay. Some of y'all brains is, is already like, I'm a boss. I'm a boss. I got this. Nope. Hold on. Simmer down. Okay. It's not just about being a boss. Right. Right. Right now we're reading about her bosshood. She considers a field and buys it out of her earnings. She plants a vineyard. 
So this woman invests, right? And if you think about this, we have a tendency to think that way back in the day, the men did all the business. This is 3,000 years ago, y'all. This is a woman who is running her household and doing business. She's not a liability. She's investing her money. She takes her earnings and then goes and plants a vineyard. She sets about her work. I'm sorry. She takes her earnings, buys the field and plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. So she's not only using her brain, she's also physically taking in labor. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. So she's really good at managing money and being profitable. Pro that's a whole thing. Profit is a, is a, is a um, theme throughout the Bible where God expects a profit. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. That's what they use to um, do wool, sew it or weave it or whatever they do. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. So not only does she does well, do well for herself, but she's always helping other people. Now, here is where it gets. So if you stop right there and don't really take everything in, this woman is a hard working woman. Most of us here. Okay. And we can just be looking at this and thinking like, Ooh, I got to work hard if I want to be a Proverbs 31 woman. Right. But then here, this is, this is when it really starts to open up. She, okay, there we go. Um, when it snows, she has no fear for her household for all of them are clothed in scarlet. Now, let me give you, can y'all hear me? I look like I'm frozen on the screen. Can y'all hear me? Let me know in the yeah. chat. Okay, good. Yes, I can. Okay, good. I don't know why I'm frozen. I'll turn my screen off. Hold on. All right. So this is where it, it moves from her just being this hustler, <laughs> hard worker, to this next line. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. Let me put that in context. This scarlet is important because back in the day, the red dye came from relatively expensive um, insects, right? And when it snows, she has no fear, right? So this is an, a part of the world where it doesn't snow often. So if it snows, you got to imagine like, oh, snap, now people are afraid. Are we going to not have food? What are we going to do? Are we going to be cold? And while everybody's tripping, while it snows, she's chilling. Not only is she chilling, but she got Versace on. Not only does she have Versace on, all the women in her household got Versace on. <laughs> Y'all know Versace is my favorite. <laughs> and so I was just having this conversation with someone and I was saying like, I, one of the things that I do not like about pop culture and how they try to portray the Bible and characters in the Bible is if you are supposed to be poor because these guys were walking around in sandals and robes. And the reality is most of the characters that you know and love were rich, rich, rich. Abraham, Isaac, uh, Joseph, Noah, um, Jesus, Matthew. Jonah. I mean, these, they were rich, rich. David, Solomon. These are your favorite characters and they was rich. And so when they hit a Proverbs 31 woman, huh, she's rich and she ain't stressing. All right, next, next line. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Okay, not only does she got Versace, but she also got Dolce & Gabbana. <laughs> purple is also a color of um, 
re, royal regal royalty back then the regal color also a very expensive dye then in between here right this is so important I'm going to read this line, this 20, uh, 23, and then we're going to go to 20, 24. Her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. Every time I read this, I always just isolated the husband like, oh, okay, you're describing her and she got a bomb husband. But the husband being respected at the city gate is a, really a reflection of her because here we go down to the next line. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. Okay, this is important. Remember, this is way back in the day. So this woman is doing business with men and she's so bomb that she's conducting herself in a respectful way where her husband, she's doing business with men and her husband is still respected at the city gate. So we as women, when we are doing business out here, especially when we are married, but before that, we're still a wife. We can't be doing business and being loose with it, I guess. I don't know. Mixing business with pleasure. Because this is back in the day. She's doing business with men. And she's carrying herself in such a way that her husband is still respected at the city gate. Remember, where did the merchants come in at? Because she's selling her garments to merchants. Where did they come in at? At the city gate. Okay. She is clothed with strength and digni dignity. Another line confirming what I'm saying. She can laugh at the days to come. She's not stressing. Now, also, let me, this is something else too, right? When we read all the way up into where the talk started talking about her clothes and her Versace, right? Um, I want to make a point that she works very hard, but guess what? She also takes care of herself. It's self-care in there. She got her nice clothes. Her ladies got their nice clothes. She's clothed with strength and dignity and she's taking care of her mental health. She can laugh at the days to come. Women, your mental health, you taking care of your mental health is what makes you a wife. If you don't take care of your mental health, that's not very wife-like. To a king, to a king. Okay. <clears throat> she speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. I saw this clip, right? This influencer posted this clip one time of this woman saying, uh, it was from a reality show overseas and she was a black woman and she was like, um, she was just speaking her opinion about marriage and they were in like, it looked like a real world type of house. They were, they were in London. I think, I don't know. It, that's what the, that's what, what the vibes was like. And so she was like, listen, I don't want to work. I want to be a lady of leisure. And then the guy gave her, her a whole tongue thrash and like, what, what are you talking about? You want to be worthless? And she was like, listen, I don't want to work. I want to be a lady of leisure. And so <laughs> everybody was digging in on the comments, but me, I'm a nerd. So I'm like, lady of leisure is literally the definition of a prostitute. So I posted in the comments, like, is someone going to tell her that lady of leisure means prostitute? <laughs> and then she did, the girl actually DM'd me and was like, Nicole, I looked up to you. Why you had to dig at me? And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna take it back. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I just, I wasn't even mad at her for saying it. I was just mad that she used the wrong phrase because I'm such a dork. And I felt like I needed to correct her. But nevertheless, right? My point that I'm making is still not really, truly not digging into her. Because if that's what you want, like a lot of times women do want to be, to not do anything, to not work. And that's their business. But if you want a king, that's not part of the deal. 
It's not part of the deal. Okay? She watches over the affair of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. She's not a lady of leisure and not in a prostitute way. What she was saying was she wants to just be leisurely and lay around and have her husband take care of her. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. I want you to know that throughout this whole scripture, we didn't even talk about God, but we're going to get to it at the end. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. This is what he says. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Again, this is a wife of a king. Just like many men are noble, but the king surpasses them all. Many wives do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor. Now we start talking about the Lord. So this woman that we just described, the thing that governs her is her fear of the Lord. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her work bring her praise at the city gate. So her return on her investment is honor and praise. The money, that's something that came as an aftermath. The thing that we need to focus on as Proverbs 31 women is honor and praise. That's what we're after. Okay. This, uh, before I go into this, this auxiliary teaching, I want to show y'all about this. There's n <laughs> I'll, I'll give you, a, this is just a Nicole little finding. This is not something I want you to put in your mental permanent mentals, this little alternate thing I want to share with y'all. Um, anybody have anything they want to say? about this before I go into this alternate thing. No. All right, cool. So I've been reading this book. Um, actually, I'm going to take a little bit of pause read, from reading and I'm going to read some other stuff right now. It's a very, very thick book. Um, I don't want to even share what the book is, but in the book, it's talks about some spiritual stuff. It is not a Christian book, but I feel very rooted. Like I would have been in the past, I would have been afraid to read something like this because um, just being like, mm, I don't, Jesus, that's it. That's all I know. But I feel so rooted and I know my foundation and I love God. I love the word of God so much. Y'all already know this. I love Jesus so much that nothing can take that away from me. I just really wanted to hear what this other author had to say. And so in this book, um, they talk about chakras. Are you guys familiar with chakras? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I wanted to make sure I understood what I was looking at. And, um, so I did a little bit of research and a lot of Christian teachings tell you not to like, cause it doesn't, it's not in the scripture anywhere, but they point out like this is of other religions and so it could i guess be blasphemy i don't know no it's there it's in the scripture okay well we're gonna talk oh you're gonna really like what i'm gonna show today <laughs> julia like no you're wrong <laughs> it's in genesis one <laughs> it's there <laughs> all right we're gonna we're gonna go we're gonna go through it i i, I do i do your voice i do you go say something but we're gonna i'm gonna show you this here today. So for those of you who are not familiar, the chakras are your seven or eight um, energy sources. Uh, and they start at the base of your spine, like in your, um, basically in your, in your privates and go all the way up <clears throat> to the top of your head. And so there are seven spots in between that are your energy sources. And um, the eighth one is a few 
centimeters above your head and it's supposed to be the, a lot of the um the writings on the internet they don't they don't do the eighth some do some don't but the eighth one is supposed to be your divine like that's where you get divine downloads from right and so um it's interesting that this scripture when we look through the order of the way that King Lemuel's mother expressed this information to him, it really kind of follows the seven chakras, right? And so I'm not saying to go start studying chakras. I'm super not saying that. You can go and get information however you want to get it. But what I am saying is, um, Tara just pushed, put something in a direct message. I'll read it in a second. Um, maybe I shouldn't because you put it in a direct message. Let me know if you want me to read it out loud. Um, but what I am saying is that truth is truth, right? And so you can look at the seven chakras as um, a spiritual thing, but they are connected to these different areas of our body and that we already know existed. Okay, we know these areas of our body exist, corresponding to specific organs that we know exist, right? So again, I'm not trying to show you this to say, hey, there's a spiritual thing here with the seven chakras. I am just saying that the seven chakras have these different locations in your body, and they correspond to different organs. Okay, that is really what I want to show you. So I just pulled these up. I'm going to um, go through the seven chakras and then I'm going to pull it up on the body just so you can see where it is. Because a lot of these little images have a lot of text and it's very, very confusing. So you st if you start at the base of your spine, right, where your privates are, that's your root, that's your instinct, survival, sense of security. The next one is like your lower intestines. That's your, your sacral. Your, that's where your emotion, everything is stored. Your solar plexus is right behind your belly button. That is your power control, freedom to be yourself. Now, these first three are supposed to be, um, they're, they're kind of grouped together as your, um, your, your instinct, the, the worldly part of you. Okay. Survival. Then once you start getting higher, you start moving more closer to God and spirituality. Then you go to your heart. It's love, balance, self-compassion. Then your throat, speech, self-expression. Your third eye, which is your pineal gland, right? In between your eye, if you go like closer to the back of your head, psychic abilities, imagination. This is where it is believed. It's crazy. One day I was asleep and this was, this is what made me even really start looking at chakras because I was asleep and God kept saying, this was about maybe two months ago, pineal, pineal, pineal gland. And so I just woke up like, let me do some research on the pineal gland. I didn't know that the pineal gland was your third eye. I had no idea. I don't know why God shared this with me. I had no idea that it was your third eye. I didn't know that it was also the eye of Horus, which you think the eye of Horus is the eye, but it's really the brain to the side. Okay, with the in, in between being your pineal gland. So this is your imagination, right? And then your crown, this is your spiritual connected, connectedness, your knowledge, your unity. And then you've got the eighth chakra up a few centimeters over top of your head, right? So let's look at, now that we know this here, let me just pull this one up. If you can see, right, this is the visual representation. Um, this is the visual representation of it. Okay. Now let's go back to Proverbs 31 woman. Again, I want you to look at this from an anatomy standpoint, not from what the spiritual representation of the energy centers are. You could do, you could, you could create your own strange fire by creating, combining that with the word if you want. Okay. Just want to show you what there was an order to this and it, literally speaks to each part of the body part of your body part so the first part she's like um first thing she says do not spend your strength on women your vigor on those who ruin kings what is that your privates don't take your private your reproductive energy your sex energy and spend it on women because you need to reserve your your energy for being a king. 
That's the first thing she says. She speaks to that. Now, keep in mind, is this is not about women or a woman because later she then spends 66% of the chapter talking about a woman. So this is not like saying, hey, women are not good for you. This is saying, don't spend your energy on chasing women. Because your energy, you need it to rule. Okay, next thing is, it is not for kings to drink wine, not for rulers to crave beer. Remember, the second energy source is your, your digestive organs. Then she immediately starts talking about food and beverage. Not food, but beverage. Lest they drink and forget what has been decreed and deprive all the oppressed of their rights. Let beer be for those who are perishing, wine for those who are anguished. Let them drink and forget their poverty no more. So we can really put these into the second and third chakra, your, your upper intestines and your lower intestines, this whole conversation. And this is your survival. So she starts with, hey, let me start with the basic stuff. Sex, drink wine, sex, beer, wine. And I'm sure beer and wine, we could probably say like, oh, we did some research. The wine focuses on this part and the beer focuses on that part. I don't know. We could find something in there and separate them out. But like your lower testament, your lower intestines and your upper and your upper abdominals. Okay. Let me get the easy stuff out the way. That is your basic survival stuff. I'm going to go back up to six. Let beer be for those who are perishing, wine for those who are in anguish. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. This is a very compassionate person who is saying, hey, let them drink and let them feel better about their situation. What is that? That's a heart thing. Hey, you don't drink, but take care of your people and make sure that they feel good. Make sure they have some type of way of coping. And you got to make sure you're taking care of them. Okay, so, so hold on before we even get into that. Okay. So now here's your heart. We're moving up to the heart. Okay. Hey, be compassionate. You can't drink, but be compassionate on them. Oh, just in case you're trying to wonder like, no, you won't let them drink, but you're not going to take advantage of them. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Boom. Very next line. You're going to let them drink but you're not going to take advantage of them. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. What? All right, so we went from your private lower intestine, upper intestine, heart. What's the next chakra? Your throat chakra. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. We had a whole conversation about words these last couple of weeks. Okay. The next chakra after that is what your pineal gland. So let's go to the picture. Let's go to the picture. Hold on. <laughs> Heart, throat, third eye. Boom. Then she starts talking about a bomb woman who is her husband is full of confidence and he lacks nothing of value. So your third eye, so it's implying that to awaken your third eye, if we're going to go with the order of what she's speaking to here, y'all know the Bible don't mince words, the order is important. Now she starts going to corresponding your pineal gland, your third eye. And she talks about how this bomb woman allows it so that her husband lacks nothing of value. So a lot of times when you are trying to open, awaken your pineal gland, you go into meditation. And the whole idea behind meditation is you focus on nothingness. You don't think about your stresses. You don't think about the future. You focus on the present moment and just being. And so if we're going to go in this order, here we are at the pineal gland and 
this man has a wife who holding it down for herself financially. Financially, she take care of herself. She take care of her household. She feeds everybody. Not only that, she's taking care of the merchants. She's taking care of the merchants who coming in and off of these ships. We already know how merchants are, sailors are coming in and off of these ships. And she holding it down so much that he can go to the city gates and he's still respected. So a man that has that type of woman, if we're going to look at it from a pineal gland aspect, a man that has that type of woman, he's focused on, all he's doing is focusing on the present. He's not stressing about the past and he's not thinking about the future. You can't activate your pineal gland if you're living in the past. You can't activate your pineal gland if you're stressing about the future. You have to be in the present. And so this woman allows her man to be in the present. Okay. So then all of that, we done went through one through six. The top chakra, let's look at the chakras really quickly. Is the crown, divine connection. So we read all of that about her. Most of it was focused on the pineal gland. This top one, all of this at the very two last line, charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord. Now we, then we start talking about God. Ain't talked about God this whole time. Let her for all that, let honor her for, for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. And so it's basically saying, hey, all of this is to honor the Lord. So being in alignment, because that's what his mom can being in alignment. Is really rested in having a good woman. Being in alignment is really in having a good woman who is fit for a king. Not fit for a pauper. Fit for a king. The woman that's fit for a king is not going to be fit for a pauper. Okay. Again, I'm not making a connection between the chakras on the spiritual side. I'm just pointing out what's here, whether you realize it or not. She literally spoke to every part of his body, starting from the bottom. You know, all right, let's say our prayers. Dear God, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you for this word. Thank you for this message. Thank you for hiding these treasures for us. Thank you for loving us so much that you just, you want us to be a better person. You want us to be more of a reflection of you. You want us to be in perfect alignment. We thank you, God. We thank you for sending your son here to die for our sins so that we may have life and have it more abundantly and we can come boldly to the throne and talk to you, our father. God, please watch over our physical health. Someone on here revealed that they weren't feeling all that great. God, please, please strengthen our physical health. We know that you are a healer. Deliver instant healing to everyone here. God, give us grace. Cover us through this week. Allow us to live in your purpose. Order our steps. 
these and all the blessings we ask in Jesus name with all power and all authority. Amen.